Hey, hallelujah. We're going to turn the service over to the pastor. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be here tonight. We want to welcome everyone. You know, we are citizens of a heavenly country. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're just passing through down here, brother and sister. Yes. Amen. And we truly are looking forward to traveling on. He's talking about throwing uh, the stone crooked and getting hit in the head anyway. I had a visual when I almost shot him in the head with a dart <laughs> <laughs> at our Christmas party. <laughs> Sorry, Rev. But, uh, praise the Lord. Good to be here. We, you know, we can have a good time tonight. Amen. Amen. We came with some encouraging words this evening and, and, uh, and just to let you know that, that God's still in, in control. God's still God. He always has been. He always will be. Amen. 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 Are we going to have church tonight? Yes. All right. Let's have a good time in the house of the Lord this evening. Let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading tonight. And I want to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 14 and verse 12. Amen. Joshua 14 and 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest how in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as said, as the Lord said. And let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. I want to use this tonight and we're going to preach on a message. Brother and sister, we are thanking God tonight for his goodness and for his blessing. We've been talking about that he has begun a good work in us and he's able to finish it. He's able to perform it under the day of Christ. And that's what we want to preach about. Let God finish. Amen. Amen. Let God finish. God's not done yet. Amen. Amen. Let God finish his work and God can and he will finish his work. So let's last ask his blessing tonight. And Reverend Walker, will you pray, please, sir? Lord Father God, we thank you for such a time as this. Lord Father God, we ask you now that you will drive out all our enemies, that, that you help us to submit ourselves unto God and to, to resist the devil so he will flee. And we thank you for all of your precious promises. And Lord Father God, I ask you now that you would unction the man of God afresh, make preaching easy, send forth your word, give us all ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the church, and we'll give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray these things. Amen. 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 Praise God. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible, this man, Caleb. Yes. Amen. And also Joshua, his running buddy. And thank God for people of like spirit. Amen. Kindred spirit. Amen. Amen. Who aren't afraid, who know that we can take the land and we are well able. Yes. Amen. We want that to be everyone's attitude. We ought to try to make that contagious, brother and sister. Amen. You know, people people get sick and they cough in their hands and they shake your hand or, or hug you and, and uh, that stuff spreads around. Well, let's spread around some, some hope, brother and sister. Let's spread around some encouragement. Amen. We want it to be contagious tonight. Amen. And thank God that we can, as the Bible tells us, iron sharpeneth iron. Amen. Yes. Amen. We can make each other better. And yes. Joshua and Caleb were that way with one another. And at this time, <clears throat> in this Bible setting, Caleb was 85 years old. That's pretty, pretty old. But I guess it's all relative. It's all <clears throat> in your thinking and what you think you can do. But even though Caleb was 85 years old, he made a statement. He said, I'm able to go in and come out. I'm able to do what I was able to do. Yes, okay. 40 years ago, I can still do what God wants me to do. Yes. I can still fight. I can still absolutely put a hurting on the enemy. Yes. Amen. Because God is with me. Amen. The same God who was with me way back then is the same God that's still with me right now. Yes. And we're here to tell you tonight. We're here to encourage you and let you know. Some of you are young. Maybe you haven't been saved that long. Well, you know what, brother and sister? Some of us have been saved a little bit longer. But we're here to tell you tonight, the same God that saved you, yes. the same God that has kept you, is going to be with you all the way till the end. And we need to let God finish his work in our lives. We need to let God finish because God is able to finish. God is able to complete the work. We go back and we learn about Caleb being one of the 12 spies that went in, him and Joshua. And they were, him and Joshua came back. We know they had a good report. 
It's like we were preaching recently about what, how we think and controlling our thoughts and how we're to think on good things, aren't we? Yeah. Amen? We're to keep our mind, brother and sister, on these good things. God tells us to do that. It's not a suggestion, but that is a commandment of God in God's word. We are to think on those things. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And we can well, Joshua and Caleb thought on the positive things. They thought on what God said. God said they were well able, and they believed what God said. But there were others. There were 10 spies, the other 10, that looked at the obstacles and looked at the enemy and looked at the problems. And they said, we can't, because they were not looking at God. They were looking at the things that they were facing. And you know, when we look at the things that we face, instead of looking at God, we're going to have the same attitude. I can't live like that. I can't do it. Stop looking at yourself. Stop looking at the temptation. Stop looking at the world and start looking at God. You can do it. They could have done it too, but they had the wrong attitude. But thank God, Caleb and Joshua, the Bible said they had a different spirit and they looked to God and they said, we are able, we are well able. They had faith, brother and sister, in the word of almighty God. Amen. Well, we know that most of the children of Israel uh, believed what the 10 had said. And because of that, they did not enter into that land of promise though they were right there on the threshold right at that time, but they ended up wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. You know, sometimes we make it harder on ourselves than it has to be. Can I get a witness, church? Yes. Come on now, we stick our feet in the mud and doubt and fear and all of these things, and we don't move forward. God's good and ready, brother and sister, for you and I to grow in his grace and to move forward yes. and to experience victory in our lives. Amen. Let's not make it harder on ourselves. Let's believe God and go forward with the Lord. We know Hebrews 3 and 19, so we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Well, Caleb kept his faith in the Lord and he served the Lord. Don't let other people get you down. Amen. Yes, Come on, church. Yes. Don't let all the, all the naysayers and the negative people, and you can't do it, and this is wrong, and that's wrong, and the other thing's wrong. Don't worry about that. Amen. There's something right tonight. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is right. Yeah. He has made you and I right. Amen. Amen. God's word is right. Yes. God's word is settled in heaven, brother and sister. Yes. Not one jot or tittle of God's word is going to pass away till all of it is fulfilled. Amen. All you got to do is read the Bible. Go back and read the end of the Bible. Man, if you're feeling down, go read the end of the book of Revelation and watch what happens to the devil. He doesn't end up victorious. He ends up cast into the lake of fire where the Antichrist and the false prophet are, and he's going to be tormented there forever. Right. It's already a done deal. It's going to happen just like God said, and we can trust the word of Almighty God. As one man said, when the devil tries to remind you of your past, why don't you go ahead and remind him of his future? Yes. Come on, church. Amen. Uh, pastor, you, you can, can I do that? You absolutely can. Didn't the Bible say to resist the devil, submit yourself to God, and he has to flee? Yes. Huh? Hallelujah. You can rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have power. Amen. Huh? Amen. Over all of the enemy, brother and sister. You don't have to put up with the garbage in your life. Yes. Come on, church. Amen. Are we excited tonight? Amen. Let's get excited. This is good news tonight. We have some good news for you. This is not just just a, a fill and things that we're just trying to say to, to spend time to, uh, brother and sister, this is the word of God. It's what God shows us. It's what God declares unto us. Brother was exhorting about uh, David and, and Pastor Keckle just preached about David. But you know, there's some other giants that people face uh, other than the external giants. There's some giants people face in their mind and in their heart. And we need to let God help us, brother and sister, by faith to get those things defeated and out of our lives. Can I get a witness today? That inferiority complex. That attitude and that idea, well, I'm no good and I'm not as good as other people and I can't do that and I'm not like that. Get rid of that, brother and sister. 
We are new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. They're of God. But sister, you know, we can sit there and we can, we can allow ourselves to be defeated in our mind. Or we can rise up and take what God has given us and, and do like Caleb did. And say, you know what, I've been serving God all this time. God made some promises to me. I want the promises that God said I could have. Amen. Well, God has made some promises to you, Christian, yes. in his word. Yes. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to partake of them. They are for you right here and right now. Amen. The things that I'm sharing with you are promises of almighty God. Yes. He said you were more than a conqueror. Through him that loved you. Amen. He said none of those plethora of things that are mentioned there. Will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Nothing or no one. Amen. Can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No wonder Jesus told us. Listen to what Jesus said. Okay. He said let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. That word let means don't allow your heart to be troubled. That means your heart doesn't have to be troubled. We allow it, brother and sister. We don't have to allow it. We don't have to let it. Why? Because we believe in God. We believe in Jesus. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes. Now listen, church. He didn't say that he had a two-man tent waiting for you in glory. He didn't say he had a shack. He didn't say, come on now, all you, all my country folk in the house. You may think this is a good thing, but he didn't say, I got a double wide waiting on you. He said, I got a mansion. You know why he said he's got a mansion for you, brother and sister? Because you are not just some average run of the mill, okay, person. You are a child of God. And God has the best for you, not only in the life to come, yes. but in this life. Amen. In this life, God has the best for you. God has the best life. Amen. Yes. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. God wants your life to be abundant. He wants it to be blessed. He wants it to be filled with all the goodness of Almighty God. We don't have to allow our heart to be troubled. He's gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and he did, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. With Jesus, brother and sister, with the Lord. The Bible speaks to us of people and they're men and women of like passions. You know, they're people just like you and I. They're not some superheroes and they have uh, some kind of uh, uh, thing that we don't have. They had a relationship with God. They believed God. We have the same thing. Actually, we have more because we've been born again of the spirit of almighty Praise. God. Because we are living after the fact that Jesus paid for the sins of mankind. And we've been, most of us, baptized with the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. We've got the baptism in with and of the Holy Ghost. They didn't have that. But listen to what he says about them, that they died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them. Come on, church. They took them unto themselves. They held on to them. They put them dear and close to their heart. The promises of Almighty God. And they confessed, as we were exhorting when we began ministering tonight, that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I know the world is messed up. I don't like what's happening in our country. But brother, sister, let me tell you something. This ain't the end of it. Let's let God finish. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. God is going to come back. We're going to come back with him. Yeah. He's going to rule and reign in righteousness upon this earth. He's going to set everything straight. I got news for you tonight. 
God wins. God has already won. And there's nothing that anyone, any demon, any devil, any politician, any people upon this earth can do about it. You make it up in your heart, in your mind, I'm going to win with Jesus. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Because it's God, brother and sister. And Caleb understood that. He, brother and sister, went through all those battles. He was there with Joshua conquering that promised land. He had to listen to all those murmurs and complainers and, and, and make it up in his heart and his mind. I'm not going to let them affect me. I'm not going to be like them. If they don't want to serve God, that's their problem. What did Joshua say? For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, brother and sister. We will serve the Lord. Make it up in your heart and your mind. Don't let others deter you from doing what God wants you to do. These people com- confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that s- declare such thing plainly, excuse me, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they had come out, they might have had opportunity to to have returned, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city because of his faith, backed up by his action. Brother and sister, he received his mountain. Hallelujah. He received what God had for him. God had something higher. God had something greater. God had something that everyone could see. Amen. Are you here? You know, God does a work in your life. It's not something done in a corner somewhere, brother and sister. God, you don't light a candle and put it under a bushel basket. You set that thing up on a candlestick and let it shine. Let that light of God shine in your life. Don't be ashamed to tell people, why, why, why don't you go out clubbing with us anymore? Well, let me tell you why. Uh, Let me go ahead and let you know why. Hallelujah. Why are you so happy now? You're not trying to drown your sorrows anymore. You know why? Jesus drowned them in his blood. They've been washed away. Hallelujah. I've got victory in my life. I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus loves me. I love him. Come on now. He's going to fulfill all of his word to me. Caleb didn't choose some low valley that was easy to walk through. He didn't choose an area whose inhabitants were small, someone that he didn't have to fight against, brother and sister. He didn't go choose somebody younger to come and fight for him. He said, no, give me my mountain. I'll go up there and I'll take it. Huh? I'm an old man, but I'll still fight. We'll go up there and we'll kill some of these giants. Okay, brother and sister, we've been talking about giants a lot lately. Okay, but he said, we'll kill some of them. And brother and sister, they did exactly just that, just as it was with Caleb. Brother and sister, God is done with you and I. He's working on us. He's preparing mountains for us. He's preparing victories for us. He's preparing us to walk on higher ground. To do things you thought you could never do. To attain the things in your life that you thought you could never have. Come on, church. Let's not stay down in the dumps, in the in the, the gutter, and grovel around like we're some kind of defeated slaves. We're not. Amen. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. It's more precious than silver and gold. Well, it's just that God paid the highest price for you and I. He gave His own Son. His own Son gave His life. Yes. Amen. Get rid of your inferiority complex. God didn't do that for the rest of creation. He didn't do it for the moon and the stars. Now they, the rest of creation gets to partake of it because God's going to restore all things because the curse is going to be lifted. Okay. But he did it for mankind. 
He did it for the creation of his that was made in his image. Are you with me today? Yes, it was lost in sin. But what we lost in sin, brother, sister, and Adam and Eve, we have regained in Jesus Christ. There's been a restoration. There can be a reconciliation. Don't you know that you can be a man or a woman of God? It's not just the preacher or a minister or a preacher's wife. You are a man or a woman yes. of God. Yes. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Oh, God has called us with a high calling, brother and sister. God is not done with us. He's working on us. He's preparing us for other victories and other mountains. And oh, thank God, brother and sister, we can absolutely do anything and everything that God wants us to do. We were goofing around at the home today. And Jacob said something about, yeah, in 10 years. You know how Jacob says things. No, he said, yeah, in 10 years. I said, Jacob, in 10 years, you're going to be getting ready to go to church so you can preach to somebody. Amen. Yes. Me? <laughs> somebody got to do it. Yes. Are you here? Amen. God's called you. Yes. Come on. Amen. You know why God's called you? Because God can equip you. God can enable you. Yes. And you can do it. Huh? The Apostle Paul said, God counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. He's not looking. Now, this is no slam against anybody because I'd be slamming myself. But he's not looking for the most intelligent. He's not looking, brother and sister, for the most eloquent. God, brother and sister, there's not my, many mighty after the flesh that are called. We see it in our own calling. What's God looking for? God's looking for men and women that will love him, the men and women that will trust him and have faith in him. Yes. Are you here? And will be faithful to him. Amen. Huh? God will make you. Huh? God will make you, brother and sister. And when God makes you, you're not some junk. Yes. Huh? We ain't gonna flip. We ain't got no tag on the bottom of your foot. Made in Taiwan, <laughs> Singapore. Amen. No, I've been made by God. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. Oh, He's done a wonderful work in my life. I'm so glad he has been so good yeah. to me. Yeah. Are you here? Do you believe the true report tonight? Yeah. Do you re believe the report of the Lord? Thank God, brother and sister. Paul went on in, in another place in Philippians chapter uh, 1, and he began to talk to the church there. Okay, He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And we do. We thank God for you. Well, sometimes you're kind of hard on me, Pastor. Well, God's molding you. You know, you don't, you don't make something beautiful, and uh, you, don't, you don't make a diamond okay, out of garbage from the trash dump. Huh? How was it made out of? It's made out of carbon, isn't it? Is that right? Coal. An old lump of coal. Okay, God's making you a diamond. God is the one. He's putting the heat to you. He's putting pressure on you. He's working out the impurities, my friend, in our lives. He's making us beautiful. And then he's polishing us. He's fine-tuning our lives. Brother and sister, God is the one. But listen. Just like the Apostle Paul, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for, for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you. Now we're going to mess Sister Alma. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. We appreciate Sister Alma. We love Sister Alma. She's a good girl. Okay, God taught her some things. She didn't fight him. She just started changing. I said, look at this. Man, praise God. Somebody wants to be what God wants them to be. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're going to miss her. She's a blessing. But, you know, we, we are confident that God has already gone before her and prepared blessings for her. There's people there. She's going to find some more people that are going to be good to her Amen. and love her and be her friends and be there for her just as she has here. Amen. And that's the wonderful thing about God. You never have to say goodbye. Right. Huh? It's 
Uh, hey, I'll see you later. Right. <laughs> Wish me family, Doc. Yes. And, and, and while we're down here, Amen. every once in a while, God lets us have a family reunion. Amen. We call it a fellowship meeting or a conference. Yes. I'll see you there. Yes. And who knows? You know, you work with the military. We never know. Where are they going to send you? They may send you back somewhere. We don't have to say goodbye. And when it's all said and done, brother and sister, we're going to be up in heaven worshiping Jesus together forever. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord forever. We're confident okay, of this very thing. And I'm confident that God that wrought a good work in her life will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. She's going to go. There's some good people over there in San Antonio. Reverend Jordan, he was taught some of the classes that I took when I was in yes. cemetery. Cemetery. Seminary. <laughs> Wasn't a <in> cemetery. <laughs> we didn't call it seminary. We called it Bible college. So that's kind of a different thing for me. Okay. That's what we called it back in the day. Okay. He taught some classes. And his wife is always a blessing. She's just a good, a good sister, good, solid Christian lady and loves people. And uh, she's going to have a good time over there. Pray for her. Okay. Uh, Tracy getting ready to go in the army. Huh? He said, who? Hey. Old things pass away, but whole old things become new. <laughs> Jesus died on the cross, brother and sister, for all of us. And they thought it was over, didn't they? Uh, they thought it was finished. As an old redneck song says, and the demons were rejoicing. They thought they had won the war. Okay. But soon they would not be laughing anymore. <laughs> on that first Easter morning when the sun woke up the earth. Come on now. The caverns of the deep opened up as to give birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings. Now the host. Come on now, children. Rise and sing. Come on. I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Got more than a feeling. I got a promise from God. Tonight as we bow our heads and close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. As we come and pray tonight. As sister comes and sing. She knows that song. You can sing it. Belt it out. Praise Let's come and pray tonight. Let God bless your soul tonight. Hallelujah. That's good news. We have a hope tonight, brother and sister.